Gina, and this week's show is all about boating. We'll get in deep with facts about boats and we'll dive into sea stories from across the world. We'll also have you swimming in knowledge about boating and related careers. And you'll even get tips on avoiding seasickness. So hold on tight, you'll want to stay afloat for this one. Today's show is brought to you by PNC Wealth Management. Hi, I'm Kiriani, and I'm here with some Girls Inc. girls who are participating in Girls Set Sail. Let's see what they have to say. What have you learned so far from Girls Inc. or from Girls Set Sail? Um, a lot about safety and the importance of wearing life jackets on boats. And what ha what has been your favorite thing about it? Going on the police boat and driving around on the water. That was really nice. Maya, what have you learned so far about Girl Set Sail? Well, I have learned about mostly safety and how to tie knots. And what has been your favorite thing? Um, learning actually how to sail. Cool. Okay, good. What's the coolest thing you've seen? Uh, probably all the really cool houses off the side, uh, cause I don't go on boats a lot, so it's really, um, awesome to see all these really nice houses and how cool they look. Yeah. <laughs> and what have you learned so far? Uh, I learned a lot about, um, how to sail and what's the proper thing to do and what you not supposed to do and how to stay safe and cool things about sailing. Yeah. What's the coolest thing you've seen? Uh, well, the coolest thing I think I've seen are the the police the police motorcycle because it was really cool it had cool lights and yeah. <laughs> what have you learned so far? Um, how to do boat safety and the bow, the stern, and the different sides of the boats and stuff. Cool. What has been the coolest thing you've seen? Um, everything was really cool, so I don't know what was the coolest. <laughs> and what have you learned so far? I've learned that when sailboats don't have their sails up, they're not sailboats. Cool. Okay, thanks, girls. Are you ready for our next Okay. <laughs> Thanks, girls. Are you ready for your next adventure? Yeah! Let's go! This segment was brought to you by Alton and Karen Fessel, helping girls to be strong, smart, and bold. I'm Kariani, and this is Sam. So Sam, can you tell me what your job is here? Sure, I run the marina here at Marina Jack. I take care of all the boats uh, that we have in the marina. We have 350 boats, and we are the landlord for all the boats to make sure that they're docked properly, everybody's safe, and uh, if there's any problems on the water, we go help them. And can you tell me what's going on here today from, for, with Girls Inc. and Marina Jack? We invited Girls Inc. to come down to learn about uh, safety on the water and to participate on some of our boats here. So we invite the police department as well to give everybody a ride, uh, both on the boat and uh, then go on a lunch cruise on the Marina Jack 2, which is behind us. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Helena, and I just completed a wonderful week at the Girls Set Sail program right here in Sarasota. On day one, I got to take a class with Captain Jack, learning things like tying knots, boating safety, and boating terms. We even got to interview Captain Jack. Let's take a look. How long have you been involved in boating? I've been involved in boating for probably 35 years. What got you interested in boating? My first uh, interest in boating was I started sailing a small sailboat out of the Sarasota Sailing Squadron. I sailed a uh, San Juan 21 and uh, raced it with the local club over there was uh, my first involvement. Can you tell us more about the course you teach for women? The course I teach for the women is about the same as I teach for the men except for one exception. On the men's course I tell the men that there's no hollering in boating. We don't yell at each other and that when your wife says, honey do you see that boat over there, the correct answer is Thank you, dear. I do see that boat, even if you see it. Uh, we need to uh, we need to communicate. Boating's all about communicating. It's not about uh, 
We don't yell at each other or anything like that. We, we talk about something before we do it and then we, we do it together. What's the most important thing for someone to know who's new, in, uh, new to boating? Education is the best thing to say. Either take a boating course from the Coast Guard or the Coast Guard Auxiliary or the Power Squadron or if nothing else, at least this How to Boat Safe course that the state of Florida has online, part of which we covered earlier today. On day two, I got to hang out with the Sarasota Marina Patrol, sit on a mo police motorcycle, and take a yummy lunch cruise on Marina Jack 2. On day three, my girls and I went to Moat Marine and learned all about the creatures that live in our mysterious blue seas. And on the final day, we arrived at Sarasota Yacht Club, where we met Santa and Buchanan to take an amazing run on the Buchanan's yacht, the Entrepreneur. We got a grand tour of the yacht, interviewed Captain Gary, and even saw Dolphin's Frockwing. It was an amazing trip, and thanks to Girls Inc. That's how I got to spend my spring break. Stay tuned for more stories and tips about boating. Bye! Hi, I'm Kyla, and for today's segment, I'm going to talk about cruise ships. Have you ever been on a cruise ship before? I haven't, but I know some interesting things about cruise ships. Cruising has become a major tourist attraction, and the U.S. made $29.4 billion, with over 19 million passengers carried worldwide in 2011. The world's largest cruise ship is the Royal Caribbean. The first cruise ship was called the Princesa Victoria Louise. It was, it was designed by Albert Ballin and was completed in 1990. Ocean liners had competitions to get more passengers, so they added luxuries and had fine dining and well-appointed staterooms. Cruise ships also have a lot of cool facilities like casinos, spas, fitness centers, shops, libraries, theaters, cinemas, indoor and outdoor pools, hot tubs, buffet restaurants, lounges, gyms, clubs, bowling alleys, ice skating rinks, rock climbing, mini golf, arcades, basketball, and even tennis courts. Since cruise ships are bigger and slower, they aren't meant to transport vessels. During World War I and II, they were used to transport soldiers and were even used as hospital ships. I hope you learned a lot about cruise ships. For Real TV, I'm Kyla. Bye! Hi, I'm Jillian, and today we're with Jason, who's a yacht broker. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, at Sarasota Yacht and Ship, what we do is a lot like real estate, except with toys. Uh, we deal with boats like the Veacham 54 here, and people come to us from all over the world to buy yachts, and we try and make them happy by putting them in boats like this. And um, tell us a little bit about this boat. Well, this is a 2010 54 Veacham Bahama Bay. This is actually a mahogany boat, which is called cold molded construction. So it's wood from the keel or from the bottom of the boat all the way up. Um, they use old world technology and new world technology. Uh, there's some neat new technology features with the engines where this boat is driven by a joystick. And as you were seeing when you walk through the boat, uh, there's a lot of interior space and mm -hmm. uh, classically finished with a lot of yeah. wood. About how much is this boat selling for? This boat is selling for 2.275 million. About how far have you seen someone take one of these? Uh, the Veachams have been over to the Bahamas. Uh, it has quite a bit of range depending on the speed that you use the boat at. Uh, generally about 350 nautical mile range which can get you to the Keys and to the Bahamas very easily. These boats typically don't go across the Atlantic Ocean or anything mm -hmm. like that. Uh, most people who do like to cruise in those areas will actually put them on a ship and ship them over to those areas. About how many people can fit in one of these? This boat has three staterooms and typically two people per stateroom and there's also some filler cushions for the couches or settees where people could sleep on those as well. As far as entertaining, you could put as many people that could comfortably fit on the boat provided we have all the safety equipment for them. Do you own one of these types of boats? I don't own a Veacham, no, but I own, own a boat similar to the boat that, sh that everyone rode in earlier. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Hi, I'm Helena, and today I'll be telling you 
facts about famous sailors. There are many sailors that I can think of, but I'm only going to talk about two to save time. The first one is Jessica Watson. She sailed around the world when she was only 16. Jessica was the youngest solo to sail around the world. She started sailing when she was six years old. The name of her boat was named Ella Pink Lady. The other person I'm going to talk about is Abby Sunderland. Abby started to sail when she was six months old and the name of her boat was Wild Eyes. Abby set sail in 2010, but she did not make it around the world. She sailed into some rough seas losing her mass, but she is not a failure. There are many more people who have sailed around the world, and there are many more who have tried, but failed, like Abby. And I won't forget that some people just sail for the fun of it, like my dad. I hope you won't get seasick on the sea spraying ride. For Girl TV, I'm Helena. Bye! Hi, I'm Jamie. Have you ever heard of a woman named Naomi James? She's a female boater. She's famous because she is the first woman to travel around the world by boat by herself, and she did it when she was only 29 years old. Naomi was born on March 2, 1949, in New Zealand on a landlocked sheep farm and didn't learn how to swim until she was 23 years old. She worked as a hairdresser until she boarded her trip for Europe in 1975. Naomi started her world trip on September 9, 1977, and came back 272 days later. It had taken her almost nine, month and nine months, and she had thought about turning around a few times, but she kept going. She had sailed on the Express Crusader. When she started her trip, she bought a cat named Boris, but he went overboard halfway through the trip. She had nearly lost her mast, capsized, and had no radio for several weeks. When she got home, she was sunburnt and windburnt, but she had beaten Francis Chinchester's solo trip by two days. After her voyage, she moved to Ireland with her husband and gave up sailing in 1982 because of suffering badly from seasickness. Not long after that, her husband James died when he fell overboard and drowned. Ten days later, her daughter was born. James was introduced to the Hall of Fame in New Zealand in 1990. I hope you've learned a lot about Naomi James. For Girl TV, I'm Jamie. Bye! This segment was brought to you by Gracie and Dennis McGillicuddy, helping girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Hi, I'm Shayla. In today's segment, we'll keep you sailing away from seasickness on a boat or a cruise with these five tips. Number one, try not to drink caffeine, such as sodas or coffee. Number two, don't eat acidic, heavy, greasy foods. Eat something light, like salads, but be cautious of dressings. When eating breakfast, try to eat cereal or something fruity. Number three, the day before your trip, get a good night's sleep. When you get on the boat, try to be calm. Number four, once you're on the boat, stay in the nice fresh air and in the shade. Be sure to drink sips of water. Number five, and lastly, try to avoid staring at stable objects such as walls or furniture. Follow these tips and your lunch won't go overboard.
For Girl TV, I'm Shayla. Bye! Hi, I'm Desiree, and today I'm going to give you seven excellent tips for having an amazing boat ride. One, decide on how long you want to be out on your boat. This will determine if you need to pack extra picnic supplies or snacks. Two, know your destination. Some places have restaurants and some don't. So if your boat doesn't have its own bathroom, take along a porta potty and supplies. Three, three, pack sunscreen and lip protection. Apply sunscreen before leaving for the day and reapply several times throughout the trip. Four, carry insect repellent and hand sanitizer. If you're fishing or exploring on small islands, the bugs can be a big challenge. Use hand sanitizer before eating any foods. Five, load up your cooler with plenty of water and beverages. Do not drive a boat while under the influence of alcohol. Six, keep plenty of snacks on hand and prepare lunch if you're gonna be gone all day. Seven, take a change of clothes for every passenger and swimsuits, hats, glasses, and skid-proof shoes while on the boat. For Girl TV, I'm Desiree. Bye! This segment was brought to you by Mark Kamen and Associates, helping girls be strong, smart, and bold. Hi, I'm Kiriani, and today we're here with Captain Gary. He is in charge of the Buchanan's yacht. Ahoy matey. <laughs> so how long have you been a captain? I've actually been a captain for over 15 years, um, but I've been in the industry itself for over 20. Cool. What exactly does a yacht captain do? Well, first and foremost, I drive the boat. But most importantly, I manage everything with the boat. Um, there's a lot that goes on with the vessel. Um, and part of that is dealing with people. I deal with all the people that board the vessel. Uh, make sure that they're always happy. Well, I'm in a service industry. So like a hotel or a restaurant, you know, I've got to make sure that we're providing the, the appropriate service to keep everyone happy. That's probably the most important thing about my job. How long did you have to go to school? I went to school for two years for this. And it entailed uh, a lot about construction, um, the how to actually operate the boat, and the navigation itself was probably the most important thing that I learned in the terms of getting the boat from point A to point B. What's your most memorable boating moment? with my grandfather on Lake Erie up in Michigan. Uh, he's the one that really got me involved with boats. And as a kid in the summertime, I spent all my weekends with him on his boat, and it was just really memorable for me. What is the weirdest and craziest thing you've experienced while on the water? Probably weather. One cruise, and it was with my mate Fabiano, we were coming back from the Hamptons, and uh, we were heading into New Jersey, actually, and the weather turned immediately to from just spectacular sunny blue skies to just this horrific, what seemed like hurricane conditions, <laughs> but um, the waves and the winds just picked up so quick and so fast that we were just sitting there going, what the heck is happening here? <laughs> So what did you do? Well, first we had to slow way down before we could actually get into New Jersey because of the weather dictated how fast we could go. But the uh, what we actually had to do was coming into the inlet, um, I needed Fabiano's assistance um, to guide me through because it was a narrow pathway and the sea conditions were taking the boat all over the place. So. I needed him to help me keep it on a straight path, so he assisted me here at the helm. And thank goodness we made it, and here to talk about it. What do you think it takes to be a captain? Um, the biggest thing is the hours are strange. So most people in their normal work life, they put in a 40 hour work week, which we can do that here, but because of the, the 
people that we deal with and their schedules, that changes. So we work odd hours. So you gotta be able to work strange hours all night, go 24 seven. And um, the other thing is just to be able to, when we're going, because of the long hours, maintain your sanity. So that, that's pretty important. What's the hardest thing about your job? Hardest thing? Hmm. I would have to say the hardest thing would be knowing that sometimes when I have people on board and we're out in the Gulf of Mexico or the ocean um, and the weather turns bad, the hardest thing is first that I have to ensure their safety, the, the passenger's safety, but also getting the boat there and making them feel comfortable in the process even though it's uncomfortable. What's the best thing about your job? Talking to people like you. <laughs> Can you tell us what the best trip you've ha taken? The best trip I ever took was, um, you know what, probably just here locally. I've grown to really love Florida. Um, the Sarasota area is just beautiful to cruise in. And also taking the boat down to the Keys. So Key West, Marathon. Um, I think is just spectacular. The west coast of Florida offers so much in terms of cruising um, that it's it's fantastic. What are some of the things you have to maintain? Oh, you have to do. Okay. I set that over. Okay. What are some of the things you have to do to maintain the boat? Uh, first and foremost, we have to always make it look spectacular. So we clean the boat constantly. Um, and then the other things that we have to do that are very important are maintaining the engines, the air conditioning system, and, and really it just comes down to the general overall appearance and making sure all the machinery operates properly. And can you tell us about barnacles? Yeah, the barnacles, being here in Sarasota at the Sarasota Yacht Club, we have uh, quite a bit of growth that can happen on the bottom of the boat with barnacles. And because we have quite a bit of movement with the tide, so the water's moving in and out from the Gulf of Mexico, those organisms are coming back and forth, back and forth. So they want something to latch onto. This is a perfect, perfect place to um, grab onto and hold onto. So we can, it can really grow fast and create problems for me as a captain to navigate the boat properly. How fast does this yacht go? This boat, the fastest it will go is 22 knots. Um, and with that, it, uh, it burns a lot of fuel. So we run, we run real conservative here. We go, we go pretty slow most of the time. <laughs> what lands of wildlife have you seen? What wildlife? Mm -hmm. Obviously porpoises, manatee, stingray. Um, the other ones we've seen are um, lots of fish, um, so that, that's pretty much it. What would you tell girls that would like to have an awesome career like yours? Um, first and foremost, um, if you want to get into this business, be prepared to work. Uh, there's a lot of physical labor when you first get into this business as you progress up to different levels. I gotta get this real quick. But you would come on, there's various positions. Uh, you could be a mate, um, which a mate would assist the captain in many things. Uh, cleaning the boat, uh, driving the boat. Um, there's also chefs, um, stewardesses. Um, they could all come on and assist me in properly operating the vessel. Well, thank you for joining me today, Captain Gary. Well, thank you. For Girl TV, I'm Kariani. Bye. Hi, I'm Kariani, and today I will be telling you about different types of boats. Let's talk about a very popular one. First, the sailboat. A sailboat is a small sailing vessel, usually with a single mast. 
A mast is a vertical pole for supporting sails. The barge. A barge is a flat bottom boat that usually carries heavy loads, especially on canals. The brigantine. In sailing, a brigantine is a vessel with two masts. The caravel. A caravel is a small three-masted vessel developed in the 14th century. The collier. A collier is a historical term used to describe a bulk cargo ship designed to carry coal, especially for naval use by coal-fired warships. The schooner. The schooner is a sailboat that generally has two masts, though some have had up to seven. The freighter. A freighter is a vessel used mainly for carrying cargo. The galleon. A galleon is a large square rigged sailing ship with three or more masts used by the Spanish for commerce and war from the 15th to the 18th century. And finally, I will tell you about the yacht. A yacht is a vessel used for private cruising, racing, or other non-commercial purposes. But these aren't the only boats, there are a lot more. If this has sparked your curiosity in the world of boats, great, because we only covered a few. If you're interested in knowing more about boats, visit your local library or explore the World Wide Web. For Girl TV, I'm Kariani. Bye! Today's show is brought to you by PNC Wealth Management.